Hey, everybody. Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. We appreciate you spending some time with us. We have a lot to get to today. Uh, we're going to be talking about 23andMe filing for bankruptcy protection, what that means not only for the company, but more importantly for you, all of your personal information and the data that is stored by the company. What led to that bankruptcy and what should you be doing as a consumer to make sure your information is safe. We're also going to be talking about a rescue story that I uh, went after this week. It involved an 82-year-old man with uh, physical and health challenges from Inkster who got caught up in a big problem with Poshmark, the popular online retailer. Uh, he, he bid for an item. Unfortunately, the item only worth about 150 bucks, but he ended up bidding $10,000, clearly a mistake with the keyboard, and you're going to see how that all played out. We're also uh, answering some of your questions and some coming in regarding uh, issues with Social Security and changes uh, that could impact millions of seniors across the country and right here in Metro Detroit. But we're going to begin today talking about uh, the 23andMe bankruptcy filing because I know many of you are concerned about what this means for your data and also what it means for your personal information because the company stores all of that and if they in fact go belly up, uh, how could that impact you and your personal info? I want to bring in Matt Loria. He is the uh, man behind Oxium Security in Michigan. He handles a variety of security issues. We talk with him and get his expert advice on situations like this one. Matt, thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. Well, thanks for having me here with you, Hank. All right, so uh, taking a look at 23andMe, which is a company uh, that that we know uh, houses a lot of personal information, a lot of personal data on millions of Americans, uh, knowing that the company is now dealing with this bankruptcy challenge uh, just off the top, why does this spark uh, so much concern for people? Well, there's so much highly sensitive data, personal data, right? DNA profiles and other related health information from millions of people from around the world that are being stored by 23andMe. And so the issue and concern is, is that if this company is now sold off uh, in bankruptcy, who's going to be the owner of this data? And uh, unfortunately, my understanding is, is that because they are not a covered entity, uh, they're not bound by HIPAA laws. So uh, we've got a little bit of an issue here. I mean, they, there are some other major privacy laws that cover them, but they're not covered by HIPAA like your, like your doctor would be. So if, if I have used 23andMe, if I have an account set up with 23andMe, what should I be doing right now to make sure that my personal information, that my data isn't just going to kind of be out there for the picking? Well, I'm, I'm not familiar with all the settings and whatnot throughout 23andMe, but what I would encourage you to do is to go into your profile and see if there's any opt-out clauses where you can be opting out your personal data from anything possible. So I would be focused there uh, first and foremost. Uh, that would be my primary concern uh, and, and really seems to be right now your only uh, real course of action. This is in a little bit of a wait and see activity right now. How concerning is this, Matt? Because, I mean, this company not only has your personal information, your date of birth, uh, social security number, but they have very personal information about your DNA. Is that why this sure. is so concerning for people? Yeah, I mean, you know, you think about it. When you go to the hospital, if you have if you have any genetic testing done, they make you sign a, a battery of uh, of uh, legal documents, basically saying, "Hey, do you know what you're doing here? You're giving us full access to uh, this genetic information, which you know, in some way could be used uh, against you really uh, later in life." So if you think about you know, if somebody has your genetic information, and, and we know that there's genetic tests out there that, that can say, oh, are you, are you more susceptible to a certain type of cancer, um, you know, because of your genetic makeup? Um, let's say that information gets in the hands of an insurance company, right? Now, all of a sudden, that insurance company may find ways to uh, deny you. Uh, of, of certain coverages or not sell you a life insurance policy or whatever that might be. Um, those are some of the concerns that I would be having here. Yeah, I want to read you a statement. Uh, this uh, came from Attorney General Dana Nessel. She put out a full release today about this and, and just taken a nugget out of it. She says, uh, 23andMe collects and stores some of 
people's most sensitive personal information, our genetic code. With the company now in bankruptcy, consumers should be aware of the potential risk and consider deleting their accounts to protect their data, just as you said. And I think that's what really makes this one different. I mean, have we had a situation like this where we've had so many millions of Americans, because this was widely popular, you know, about five years ago, uh, so many millions of Americans, uh, you know, uh, take the time to create accounts, to submit their DNA swabs. Have we seen something similar to this, or is this one posing some, some unique challenges? I think this one is this one's in the in the area of unique. I mean, we've had a lot of major healthcare breaches. We know that financial institutions, we know that uh, healthcare organizations are prime targets for uh, for for data piracy. And so, um, you know, while we've experienced this, we've never really experienced it with this level of of information. I mean, this is this is completely immutable personal data, right? You can change everything else. You can change a password. You can get your social security number changed. You can change anything, but you cannot change your, your DNA code. So and, we, yeah, and I, you know, I guess, like you know, I, I see on on Instagram reels all the time, right? There's all the all, all these different companies kind of pop up. A lot of them have hit social media now, which in the early days of 23andMe, you know, they they weren't necessarily flooding the social media market as much as some of these newer companies are. But a lot of them, you know, promising to do blood work or unlock your genetic code or help figure out your dietary secrets, um, and and they make the process seem so easy which in many cases it is like with 23 and me it's not a difficult process in order to help unlock all of that stuff but should we the consumer be a little bit more skeptical of these types of businesses or at least make sure that we're doing enough research to know where all of that personal info is going yeah i mean i think that you know there's a couple of couple of things coming up for me based on what you said i mean the, the issue of can we can we delete our accounts, right? We don't know where this data is stored or where the backups are stored. So even if you delete your account, it doesn't mean that you're that you're just off the map with all of this information. So I'd be I would warn that 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 might not be the way to um, to actually you know cure cure this. I don't know that there's a, a cure. Um, but overall, just when when you're talking about um, your own personal data, I, I liken it to your health, right? Your doctor might care about you, but nobody cares about you as much as as you care about you, or as, as much as your mom cares about you, right? But, but just like your health, nobody cares as much about your data as you do, and so you have to stay vigilant, you know, about where it's going. The challenge is, is like you just said, is that everything is just so easy. Everything is just a click away. Or in 23 in me, you know, you make an account, they ship you a little vial, you spit in the vial. And you know, off you're off to the races with information that's that's just unbelievably powerful, and so everything is easy. And so that 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 on ramp to the access for us to say, oh man, I can get I can get this information about myself. Um, you know, everything comes at a price, and it's just it's really hard to remember that. You know, when when the ease is the, is there. We've, we've, you know, used your knowledge and expertise many times when we've had these, you know, hospital hacks, cyber attacks, when we've seen banking systems kind of go down like this. It, it's important reminders for people that we really have to stay vigilant because these high tech thieves and these uh, cyber attacks are finding new and different ways every single time to kind of breach these systems and and to gather our own personal information we really have to try to stay one step ahead of it and it seems almost impossible doesn't it it, it does i mean and i think you know beyond vigilant i think we have to just think a couple of more moves down the chessboard here right so if you're about to give your information to a company like 23andme remember what you're doing you are giving your personal information to them um the the big question you know and and maybe uh, just like banks right everybody thought too big to fail um, who would have thought five years ago or 10 years ago or whenever when these guys started that this would be something that that could go bankrupt? You, you would think that this would be, you know, the most wonderful thing that could save humanity, right? Having all this information about our about our genetic code and finding our family members and our origins and everything like that. Um, we would have never thought these mul multiple moves down the chessboard of what if it goes bankrupt? Then what happens? Who owns it? Where does it go? And I think that, that that if you just to, to build on your stay vigilant, it's stay vigilant, think a couple of steps down the chessboard, you know, still live your life obviously, but but you have to you have to be just a, a shade more vigilant than we are right now, I think is the is the is the word to the wise.
I know you're a big fan of this, and it's something that we've talked about before, you know, taking the time to lock your own personal credit, which you can do just by contacting each of the three uh, credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Do you think that we kind of live in a day and age now where you have to take it a step further and maybe invest in in one of those uh, ID theft solution companies like a LifeLock or, or one of those companies to help notify you if there has in fact been a breach? Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a, a no brainer. I mean, if you can afford it, I mean, there's they have multiple levels of of protection at, at various costs. But uh, I, th I think that one's a, a no brainer. I mean, I have it for uh, myself. We offer it for, through my company to our employees. Uh, we have it for our family, you know, and 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 it does it 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 pops things up that uh, uh, that warn us. What I don't know is is what it'll do in in situations like this. So, yeah. you know, th there are no cure alls. I mean, there's just there's just various degrees of being a little bit safer than than maybe what you are today, and and, and yeah, a life lock and locking your credit, those are all uh, wonderful things to uh, to do. Yeah, I mean this one, as you mentioned, it's it's a rather unique because you're not just talking about your personal info, you know, your date of birth, uh, address, whatever, but you're talking about your actual DNA. I mean, it kind of changes the game a little bit. So, uh, I, Matt, I'm sure we're going to be talking to you about this uh, further in the days and the weeks to come as we learn more information. But we appreciate your time today. Okay, thanks, Hank. Thanks All right, thanks, me. Matt. Um, uh, again, the, as you heard from the Attorney General, she's also very concerned about this situation with 23andMe. This has got a lot of eyes on it, not just here at the state level, but across the country. So we expect to more, uh, learn more information about how the company will be moving forward and what outreach we can expect from the company to their subscribers, to their users in, in the best methodology in order to work to protect the information that you have stored with 23andMe. So, uh, much more to come in the very near future. Another story I want to bring to your attention involves a problem with Poshmark that an Inkster man was having, and an 82-year-old Inkster man uh, battling with this company because of a mistake he made when he was bidding uh, on a product that was for sale during a live auction. It was a jacket that was listed for around 150 bucks, but by accident, a mistake with the keystroke, he bid over 10 grand and then was involved in quite a lengthy battle in order to work to try to get his money back. His daughter reaching out to help me, Hank, last week because she was pulling her hair out. She didn't know what else to do. I want you to take a look at the uh, first report that we aired when we met her and talked with her about her father's situation. It all started right here on the popular shopping website Poshmark. Janelle says her elderly father, who is in poor health, was looking for a new coat and stumbled on a live auction. I knew that was just totally accidental. Yeah. Because, well, number one, it's a small lady's jacket. Yeah. So he wouldn't have wanted that. And then he wouldn't have wanted to spend $10,000 on something that was only being you know, sold for like 150. Instantly, he knew something was wrong, but the seller thought that she'd made the sale of her lifetime. He saw the seller jump up and say, oh, thank you. And um, yeah, got a charge for $10,000. Janelle and her father have spent the last few weeks now battling to get their money back. More than $10,000 spent on a coat that was for sale for about 150. It's been very stressful yeah. because we're waiting, you know, to see um, what could come of it. Whether you know Poshmark is going to help us, whether um, his credit card is going to reverse the charge, and yeah, he's lost quite a bit of sleep over it. I've reached out to Poshmark, and the company's taking a close look at what happened here. We're also hoping the credit card company may step in and stop payment. Janelle, like many people with aging parents now, knows that she has to keep a close eye on everything her dad is doing. People talk about, you know, raising your parents, and yeah. you try to watch out and see the things that they're doing and what's going on, and it's just, it's hard. You can uh, understand how frustrating it was for Janelle as she was working to try to solve this problem for her dad. Uh, we reached out to Poshmark and it you know, took a few days, uh, but they uh, eventually got back to us. They told us that they were investigating the situation, taking a close look at it. And then yesterday, I got an email as I was out on another story and it said, uh, please contact us. We're, we're working to reach the family. We have some new information. So take a look at what developed next. 
Thank you so much. We're just so grateful. Tonight, relief and a refund on the way. More than $10,000 headed back into an elderly and ill Inkster man's bank account. We are just so thankful and grateful that this whole um, ordeal is over. My father um, on last week received an email from Poshmark saying that once they received the package, they would um, issue a credit. This issue all unfolded starting back in February when Janelle's father bid on a jacket during a live bid. The asking price, 150. He accidentally bid more than $10,000. The money removed from his account, even though he immediately contacted Poshmark and was told that he could not get his money back. His daughter has been fighting on his behalf since then. It's been very stressful yeah. because we're waiting, you know, to see um, what could come of it, whether, you know, Poshmark is going to help us, whether um, his credit card is going to reverse the charge. And yeah, he's lost quite a bit of sleep over it. Then Help Me Hank got involved. We've been in touch with the Poshmark team and today received this statement. After discussing further with the customer, we have offered them a courtesy one-time refund for the order as we recognize that mistakes happen. Going forward, we've asked them to take extra precaution when participating in an auction during Posh Show as all bids are binding. So some good news for that family. You can uh, understand their relief uh, learning that money now deposited back into that 82-year-old's account. More than $10,000, $10,600. Uh, Poshmark making that decision yesterday. And of course, reminding us all that we need to be aware, you know, so many of us, uh, you know, making a purchase or trying to make a purchase online quickly, whether you're a senior or not, it's just a good reminder that we all have to take a little bit of time to make sure that we understand what we're actually getting ourselves into online. Uh, uh, something else uh, we want to mention, uh, we always spend some time here towards the end of, of our time here on Local 4 Plus asking for your questions. We've received a number of emails uh, from people who are concerned about changes to the Social Security Administration moving forward. Uh, these changes are going to be enforced, we're told, at the end of the month, month starting on March 31st. Uh, what we have learned from the administration is that uh, those who are collecting Social Security, which in the U.S., that's 70 million Americans, uh, the payments, more than $1.5 trillion paid out across the country, that you will now have to work with Social Security to identify uh, who you are, to have another layer of protection for the Social Security Administration to verify that you are, in fact, somebody who is still receiving these benefits, essentially to verify that you are alive, that you're at the same address, that you have the same banking information. Uh, the questions that are uh, are still compl not completely uh, figured out yet are, are how that is going to take place. There may be an opportunity for some of you to do that verification over the phone or online, but in some cases they may be requiring you to visit a local Social Security Administration office. And I know some of them are slated to close across the country. Uh, we are going to be working on this story uh, within the coming week to help provide you the information that you need. But in the short term, we're being told that these changes will be enforced starting the 31st. And then within the coming months, you will receive a notification from the Social Security Administration, likely via letter, uh, telling you how you are to report uh, that you are still in active need of receiving this benefit. And in most cases, that is going to require you to physically make your way to one of these offices. Again, the final information has not been laid out by the administration, uh, but it's something that we're keeping a close eye on and just want to make you aware uh, that we understand that there are some questions that many of you have, and that is the latest information that we have right now from the administration. Uh, we're going to continue to follow the uh, developments with 23 and Me. Uh, as you heard Matt Loria say right now, it's probably a good idea for you to make your way to the website itself if you have an account. There's a series of steps you can go through and they have that information posted for you on the website itself if you in fact choose to delete your data. Uh, we appreciate you spending some time here with us. Remember for all the information you need and to get in touch with me, all you have to do is head to the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. We hope you have a great day. Thank you.